Hello world, welcome back to Razer RC. Just shooting a video today talking about five important fixes and upgrades for your team associate B74. Hopefully you've seen my full review video of this buggy. I uh, have been having a lot of fun with it, uh, but just wanted to cover a few things that you may or may not already know, depending on how much you're following uh, this buggy in the online forums and Facebook and stuff like that. So just want to cover a few things. So these are five important fixes or upgrades for your B74. This is my quick good kit. I'm going to take off the body real quick and show you uh, what I got. So uh, there, this is a really nice buggy. It does have a few weaknesses and issues uh, on the first run. Just wanted to cover real quick. Um, if you've seen my review of this buggy, I did complain that there was no fan mounts for the fan in the back. And so as you can see here, I do actually have a fan mount. And so a recommended part that will fit this buggy is this guy right here, the Revolution Design RDRP0474. And this is an aluminum fan mount uh, for the Yokomo YZ4SF, but it fits really, really nice also on the B74. I'll just kind of show you what it looks like right there. So I've got a 30 millimeter Team Powers fan hooked up. It basically just bolts right onto the center uh, spine right there. I did put a two millimeter spacer just to get it off of the chassis a little bit so it's not rubbing uh, the chassis, especially the side piece right here. So um, yeah, pretty inexpensive part. I think it's like $15, fits really nicely. Uh, mount your fan mount, your fan super securely and obviously will provide tons of cooling for your motor. Especially if you're running like a spec class, uh, having a fan is pretty much mandatory just to keep it cool and keep it uh, nice and powerful throughout the life of the run. So that is definitely helpful. Number two is to basically pick up the plastic gears uh, for the differentials. And what you can do is actually pick up the part from the B64. It's the exact same size, exact same part number, and fits perfectly nicely in the front, center, and rear differentials. Now that uh, those plastic gears uh, obviously are more for 17.5 or 13.5 racing. You wouldn't really want to run it in a mod buggy, but uh, definitely drops a lot of weight. You actually drew drop about 10 grams off of each differential. So those are also in the drivetrain. So, you know, front, middle, rear, you're dropping 30 grams of weight off the drivetrain. Provides a lot more punch, a lot more pop off the uh, motor, a lot more acceleration. So definitely uh, recommend doing that. That's tip number two. Tip number three, I think is a little bit of a design flaw that they didn't quite notice until later. So uh, if you look at this front out drive here, on the left, you can see that it's kind of all chewed up. It's actually a little messed up. And the reason for that is out of the box, the amount of suspension travel on the suspension arms actually at full compression. So when you got the shock fully compressed, this out drive will actually, I'm sorry, this drive shaft will actually clip that out drive and actually rub right there and actually damage your out drive. So, what Team Associate recommends you do is actually put some spacers uh, on the shock shafts themselves. And so if you look at some of the setups out there, they actually have uh, setups where they talk about spacers on the inside and the outside. So if you look at the Dustin Evans setup, he actually says, you know, like zero millimeter of spacers inside and two outside. And so what they're using is actually this part number, 4187 nylon washers. So these fit the shock shafts perfectly. They're 0.03 inches, which is 0.75 millimeters. So you definitely will want to put uh, at least one on the front shock shafts. Um, that will give you just barely enough clearance so they don't rub, they don't damage your out drives. Otherwise you're going to be replacing out drives and that's expensive and quite annoying. So put at least one on the front. Some guys run two if you want a little more clearance. It does limit the up travel obviously so that, uh, you know, there is enough. I've got one on the front here um, so that you do uh, space it out a little bit, but uh, two you can do if you want to be extra safe. The rear is also super close. So kind of depending on where you're mounting your shocks and stuff, um, it is going to get super close to that out drive. As you can see on my drive shaft, it's actually worn a little bit, but it does just like barely clear or maybe just touch a tiny bit, but I haven't really had any problems with the rear. The front is the main issue. You definitely want to run it at least one spacer. You can also put one on the rear if you like, but um, that's what I'm running, one spacer on the front. So that's tip number three. And then the last two tips uh, I'm going to go through. First of all, you, you definitely need to get this, the B64 diff shims. So there is a problem with the front and rear uh, differentials. Actually, the, the shim that they've got on the underneath of the uh, 
uh, no, we call it the ring, uh, I'm sorry, the crown gear on the uh, ring gear side actually is a little bit too big. And so you, you definitely want to run uh, these little shims that they got here in part number 92079. So it comes with these little blue washers. I don't know if you can tell that in, in the box, but these two down here are just kind of these smaller uh, shims. They're slightly thinner. They got a slightly blue color and actually fit a lot better. The problem with the stock ones is that they're a little too big. They kind of cone a little bit. They'll start deforming after you run these for a while. And eventually they just kind of lock up your differential and you'll lose all your diff action completely. And it'll just completely lock in the rear end. So uh, switch out those shims for the blue ones. Um, you only have to do it on the metal ring gear side. You don't have to do it on the plastic uh, cup side and you don't have to do it on the center diff either. It's just the front and the rear that have that problem. So pick those up and you'll avoid uh, that problem. I think all the newer kits, they're gonna start shipping with those blue shims instead of the silver ones. Um, but if you've got one of the original runs or, or kind of the newer, the older ones, you definitely wanna uh, swap those out. And then the other piece you want out of this diff shim kit is tip number five. So these larger diff shims, the silver colored ones right here, um, they are used to, sh to shift the, di the diffs left or right a little bit to, to space out the diff correctly. But I did notice also on my center differential, there was a ton of play, a lot of back and forth uh, movement uh, in that differential. So I used two more shims on the differential itself. I put one on each side and then matched the uh, pinion gear there, but uh, that eliminate all the slop uh, out of the box. There's just a ton of slop uh, forward and back, made a lot of noise, didn't really spin quite as smoothly. So I, I recommend also using that little dish shim kit and shimming your center differential. I think the slipper uh, has, so has a little bit of problem, so that can help as well. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's it. Five tips for your team associate B74. Uh, all these parts are fairly inexpensive. It does correct some minor problems with the B74. It does drive awesome. And I do love this buggy, but I, I think they missed a couple of little things. But with these corrections, I think you'll uh, find your buggy a lot more reliable and perform it a little better. So anyways, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, hit the add notifications button, and look for more, more videos soon.